We are still in our series of Abba Father. We are still here learning about God as a Father and what that means to us. There's so many things that we've been learning these last three or four weeks about God as a Father. God as a Father. We've been learning about God as a Father. He's the Father who sees. We've been learning about God, the Father. He's the Father who disciplines. He's the Father who is waiting. And today I'm going to share with you another side of God. Another side of God that I believe will help you, that will bless you. So our word today is going to be from Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8. And if you are there, you can say amen. Amen. So Isaiah 64, verse 8. And the Bible says, But now, O Lord, you are our Father. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you our potter, and all we are the work of your hand. Hallelujah. Such a wonderful word from Isaiah as he was praying to God. He said, God, you are our father. We are the clay. You are our potter. And all we are, we are the work of your hand. Today, I want to tell you about Abba Father, the great potter. Hallelujah. Abba Father the great potter, and the work of his hands. I want to tell you about this great potter and the work of his hands. I had a video to show you, but we can't get it up. But when you learn about pottery, when you watch videos about pottery, you take a clay mixed with dirt and all kinds of things, you add water, you put it into the machine, and you begin to work it with your hands. And you're able to make so many different objects. You're able to make so many different things from just a pot of clay. And that's what God, Isaiah was saying to God, is that God, you, we are the clay. And you are the great potter. And everything that we are, everything that I am, we are the work of your hands. Because the potter will make the pot, will make the clay, will make the objects, all with his hands. Everything he would do with his hands. And Isaiah wanted to to show that God, I know who I am, that I am just a clay, but you are the great potter. So I'm going to tell you about Abba Father, the great potter. And first I want to tell you about the work of his hands. The work of God's hands. One thing I want to remind you is that God, he created the world by his hands. I want to show you that God is a great potter. So if he created the world in his hands, what application, what implication does that mean to me? So God made the world by his hands. I, um, Acts chapter 7 verse 50, the Bible said, Has my hand not made all these things? Everything you see in the world, everything you see in society, everything you see in creation was made by the hand of God. It was made by the hand of God. God laid the foundations of the earth. Isaiah 66 verse 2. For all those things which my hand has made, and all those things exist, says the Lord. So everything, God is saying that my hand has made it. Everything that exists, the foundation of the earth, the foundation of the world. The Bible says in the beginning, God spoke. In the beginning, God made. In the beginning, God created. So the work of this great potter's hand is marvelous for all of of us to see. Everything you see when you look at the stars, the sky, the moon, the sea, the animals, they were made by the hand of this great potter. And I want to introduce him to you today. And I want to show you how great he is. And he made us. He made you. He formed you. He breathed into you and you became a living being. And one thing you need to understand is that the great potter made you with skill and beauty. The great potter, he made you with skill and he made you with beauty. Do you know what David said in Psalm 139? He said, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. David said, God, I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And it's so sad that sometimes people go through the world and they, they, they don't like themselves. They despise themselves. And you see in the world so many people trying to do all kinds of surgeries, 
all kinds of things to try and alter their image, to try and change who they are. But I'm here to remind you that you are skillfully and beautifully made by a great potter. God had a special design in mind when he made you. God had a special thing in mind when he created you. God did not just, uh, just bring you up out of nowhere. He made you with skill. So I am made with skill. And I am made beautifully. So however you look, however you are, God wants to remind you that he is a great potter and he made you with skill and beauty. So remind yourself all of that. Whenever someone tries to bring you down or someone tries to bring down your, 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 your looks or your, your, the way you look, say that I am made by God. I am made by God. However I am, however you see me, I am made by God with skill and with beauty. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So be encouraged by that message. That God, he is a great potter. And the whole world, everything shows his glory. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament show his handiwork. The heavens declare that God is glorious. The heavens declare that God is mighty. The heavens declare that he is a great potter. When you fly in the air on a plane and you see how the cloud is, God is a great artist. He's a mighty artist. And he declares his glory. When you look at the human nature, the human body, the complexity of our mind, of our heart, every, how, how our organs even move, God is a great artist. And he doesn't make mistakes. He never makes any mistakes. The fact that you are here, you are not here by mistake. The way that you were made, you were not made by mistake. Because when you see how God created the world and how he made you, you are not here by mistake. You are not made in mistake. You are made with skill. And everything in this world show the glory of God. Yeah. This is the work of the potter's hand. And even in creation, everything is sustained still by his hand. Everything is sustained by his hand. When you, when you watch how they make, when a potter makes a clay, very rarely does he take his hands away. He continues to form it with his hand. He continues to form it with his hand and shapes it and puts a hand in there. So God is still active in creation. God is what? Is still active in creation. And he's still sustaining us. David said in Psalm 145, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You open your hand, God. You open your hand and every living thing is satisfied. You open your hand and the birds are able to eat. You open your hand and the creature is supposed to find food. You open your hand and everything falls into place. So God, as a great potter, is still sustaining his world. He is still active in the world. He is still working in the lives of believers. He is still working in your life. He is still making a way in your life. He is still molding you and shaping you. He is still putting water on you. He is still trying to transform you. He is still trying to shape you and make you with something glorious because he is the great potter. Abba Father. So the whole world is still being sustained by God. And David said that what you have given them, they gather in. You open your hand and they are filled with good. You open your hand, God, and I am filled with good. You open your hands and nature, creation, everything is filled with good by the hand of the Lord. So God is a great potter and his hand is still working. His hand is still working in creation. His hand is still bringing water. His hand is still shaping. His hand is doing so many great things. And he holds the world in his hands. The whole world. Everything is in the hands of this great potter. To shape the world. To shape your life. Everything. So your life is in God's hand. As a believer. Your life is in the hands of God. The moment you commit to him, he is, you, you, he is the great potter and you are the clay and his hand is still over you. Hallelujah. God's hand is over your life. God's hand is over your marriage. God's hand is over your job. God's hand is over you in so many ways that you cannot even think or imagine. His hand is still working on you. 
because he's the great potter. And Job, like Job said in Job 12, 10, in whose hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. And, and, and David said, my times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies. He said, God, whenever David was in trouble, whenever trouble came, he reminded me that, God, you are the great potter. My life is in your hands. So come and what? And deliver me. Because you made me wonderfully. You made me beautifully. You, you made me with such excellence. But now the enemy is trying to destroy what you have made. But God, I'm here to remind you that my life is in your hands. So come and deliver me. I'm here to tell somebody today that your life is in the hands of God. And there's not a day that he has let go of you. As the potter is molding the clay, so God's hand is over your life. As the potter is holding the clay and adding water to it, so God is adding water into your life. Wherever it's dry in your life, God is adding water. Anything that needs shaping, the great potter, he is shaping it for you. Any trouble that comes your way, the great potter, he'll remove it for you. Anything that is no good, because his upper father, the great potter, he will deliver deliver you. My life are in your hands because you are the great potter and you molded me and you made me in your image and from now till I die and even after I die my life is still in your hands. How many of you believe that? That God's heart, my life is in God's hands. And what a wonderful thing to understand or to know that my life is in the hands of a great potter, shaping me, molding me, making me into something glorious because he's the great potter. He's the great potter. Tell your neighbor, my life, your life is in the hands of the Lord. Hallelujah. So the potter, this is the work of the potter's hand to make us to sustain and to hold by his hand. But then there are some things where the damage to uh, the potter's design, there are some things that have designed, that damaged the potter's design. I am a designer of a great potter, but things have come in to damage it. One thing you need to understand about pottery, when you are making a pot or when you're making plates, one thing about them is that they are very fragile. It's very fragile. And one thing about pottery is that after you made it and you put it in there, there's so many things that can go wrong with the pots. You can, I was doing some research, you can, if you add too much water, the air will go on one side and then it will crack, the clay can be too hard. There's so many things that can go wrong. And I want to tell you a story. In Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 1. I want to tell you a story from this and then I want to show you how God is working and the nature of God as a potter to us. Amen. Jeremiah 18 verse 1. And the Bible says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise, go down to the potter's house and there I will cause you to hear my voice. So God told Jeremiah, Jeremiah, I want to show you something. I want to show the Israelites something because there were some things that they were doing that was no great. They were being hardened. Their ears were so hard. They rejected God. So God said, Jeremiah, rise. I want to show you something. And then verse 3, then I went down to the potter's house and there he was making something at the wheel. So he came to the potter's house and the potter was making something. The potter was shaping something. The potter was making something. In verse 4, And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So Jeremiah went into the potter's house and he saw the potter making something. But all of a sudden, the thing that the potter was making, it was marred. means it was ruined. It was destroyed. It didn't turn out the way that the potter wanted it to. Hallelujah. And that is the damage that has come to so many of God's creation. The first thing is that, number one, we are fragile. We forget how fragile our life is. David said, Lord, make me to know my end. And what is the measure of my days that I may know how frail I am? 
God, help me to understand that I am fragile. God, help me to understand that I am nothing without you. God, help me to understand that I am frail and my life is just but a vapor. I am here today and gone tomorrow. Help me to understand. James even says, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then it vanishes away. In this life, sometimes we, 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 we don't really understand that this life is so short. We don't understand that life is so fragile. So we have to be careful with how we live and how we walk. There are some people, they walk as if that they're going to live forever. Some people, when they get money, some people, when they get certain things, then they become so pompous, they become filled with pride, and they live as if they're going to live forever. But they will say, God, help me to be, always be reminded that I am just a clay. Help me to always be reminded that I am just frail. Help me to always be reminded that I can easily be damaged without you. And that's what will help you to keep you humble. That is what will help you keep you humble in this life. Because if you're not careful, the smallest things will lift you up. The smallest thing will fill you with pride. The smallest thing will take you away from God. So for God to help you, to remind you how frail you are. How frail you are. And then the second thing is that one thing about pots is that it can easily crack. A pot, if you drop it, if you do something, it will just crack. Hallelujah. It will crack and it will be destroyed and the thing that you made will not be the same. And the thing is, when I did some research, it says that due to uneven drying, contraction and other forces mean it brings stress upon the pot and cracks begin to appear. Cracks begin to appear. And there's so many believers, there's so many children, there's so many people in this life that are walking around with all kinds of cracks in their life. They have been cracked by so many things in this world. They've been cracked by so many things from their childhood. They've been cracked by so many traumas that has cracked the pot, that has cracked. Because remember, remember, God made you skillfully. God made you beautifully. But as you go through the world, so many things have come in that has more, that's made you crack. Because you are just a clay. I read a story last week about a, a, a footballer who was sharing his story that he was abused at the age of six. He was selling drugs at the age of seven, eight. He was hung off a bridge at this age. He, he started smoking, he started doing this. And the damage, he has carried it all throughout his life. So people were wondering, why is he not playing as good? What is going on with him? People were insulting him and he came out with a story that this is my problem. I've been carrying this trauma all the days, all, all throughout this time. And then there's so many people going through all kinds of traumas, going through all kinds of pain, going through all kinds of difficulties. That brings crack into your life. And the thing is, you try and solitate that crack and try to put water in it, but one way or another, it will leak out because it is not fully made. And we try and go through this world. We try and go through this life with all kinds of cracks around us and try and hold it together and try and piece it together because there's so many cracks we don't know what to do hallelujah and that is troubling us so many things and that is damaging the creator's design the potter's design when you see the stories about children be i read i saw on tiktok about a, a police officers going into this woman's house she has kidnapped her children chained them to the bed they have not been eaten all the days of their life and then they have to be they, 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 they freed by the prison uh, by by the police officers and then they went to another foster home and that same foster home they, they abused their children as well so many cracks so many cracks so many people in their marriage, there's so many cracks in there that they're trying to hold it together, but it's not working. In their jobs, they're trying to hold it together, but it's not working. In their family, there's so many cracks, but it's not working. And, and the crack is, 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 is damaging us. It's damaging us. So today I want you to lay all your cracks on the altar. Any broken pieces of your clay, just, just bring it to the altar today. Bring it to God today because he's Abba Father, the great potter. 
Hallelujah. So he said to Jeremiah, go to this house. And when Jeremiah went there, he saw that the man was making a pot, but the pot was ruined. And after that, the Bible says that the same potter then started making something else. Started making something else. Started designing something even better. The Bible said that he made something else that was good for him to make. Hallelujah. And you don't, maybe you don't understand what God is trying to tell you today. But what God is trying to tell you is that he is a great potter and any cracks in your life, any cracks in your marriage, any cracks in your children, any cracks over your life, because he's a great potter, he is able to remold you and make you into his image. He is able. He's more than able. Hallelujah. So he said to him, uh, it was damaged, Jeremiah 18. It was damaged, it was ruined. And then so he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Verse 5. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as with this potter? Hallelujah. And God said to Israel, Israel, you have seen this potter try and make something, and it was ruined, it was cracked, it was broken, but he did not give up. All he did was he added water, he added more clay, and he made something better. And he said to you, O Israel, I can can do the same thing for you. I can do the same thing for you. Whatever has been cracked in your life, whatever has been damaged in your family, whatever has been damaged in your mind, do not give up and do not lose hope. Just bring your crack to God and he will add water and God will add water and God will add clay and God will begin to mold you. Whatever has been broken, I pray over your life today. I pray over your mind today that the great potter will make you, will remake you, will mold you, will shape you, in the name of Jesus. Amen. He's the God of second chances. He's the God of reformation. He's the God that can make something new. Because he's a great potter. It doesn't matter what damage has come into your life. It doesn't matter what damage you are dealing with. God is a great potter. And he can make you again. Hallelujah. Whatever you have lost, whatever has damaged you, God can remold you again. God can do it again. God can make it again. Just bring it to him. Just bring it to him. He can take you from ruins and make you into a masterpiece. Hallelujah. The Egyptian Israel, when they were in Egypt, they were in ruins. They were in ruins. They were slaves. They were crying every day. God said to Moses, I have heard the cry of my children, and I have come to deliver them. Because he's the great potter. His children were ruined. Uh, they were in slavery. Some of you, you are in slavery. You are slaves to sin. You are slaves to the world. Some of you, the, the, the spirit that's controlling you and leading you away from God. But today, God, the great potter, he said, I have come to save my children and to remake them again. Some of you, you have lost your, your love for Jesus. You have lost your love for God. But today, God is saying that I have come to remake them again, to do something new again. So he sent Moses into Egypt and he brought Israel out of Egypt by his mighty hand. That mighty hand of the great potter, it can take you from slavery onto new places. That mighty hand, I pray over your life. I pray over your mind. I pray over your marriage. I pray over you that the mighty hand of the great potter to go into your life in the name of Jesus. He's our father, the great potter. He can make something that is ruined and turn it into a masterpiece. In Israel, they were laughing at Israel. But now, when he took them to the promised land, all the other nations were afraid of them. That is the work of the great potter. That is the work of the great potter. He can take you from ruin and make you to a masterpiece. Turn you to a masterpiece. 
He can make you glorious. He can make you amazing. He can mold you again. He can mold you again. He can reshape your life. He can turn your life around. It is never too late. With God on your side, He said, I am Abba Father. I am talking to somebody today. I am preaching to somebody today that God, Abba, Father, He is a great water over your life and His hand is over you. My God, His hand is over you. He never let you go. He never stopped. Hallelujah. And sometimes the pot might be cracked. Sometimes it might chip away. Sometimes things might come in that will take you away. But if you bring those things to God, He will just add water. Hallelujah. Then whoever believes in me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Whoever believes in me, whoever trusts in Jesus, out of his belly will flow water. Water that will heal the cracks. Water that will heal the wounds. Water that will remove you. Water. I am talking about the Spirit of God. And I pray today that God's Spirit will fill your life. Every area of your life, the Spirit of the living God, to fill it in the name of Jesus. My God, my God, my God. My God, my God, my God. Lima Kataraba. Uh, from ruin to masterpiece. Because he's the great potter. Whatever has been ruined, God can remake it. Hallelujah. God can take you from unusable to functional. Uh, you don't understand. When the potter is broken, what people normally do is they throw it in the bin. They throw it away. Hallelujah. And maybe there's so many things that's going into your life that people are throwing you away. People are pushing you away. And you think that you are not usable. You think that nobody has use of you anymore. You think your job has no use of you. You think your marriage, there's no use of you. But I'm here to tell you that Abba Father, He can take you from unusable functional in the name of Jesus. I, I'm not hearing somebody. I'm not hearing you. If you believe that God is able, if you believe that God can do it, I say, ah, my God, my God, just open your mouth. Say, God, I receive it. God, I know you can do it. God, I believe you. God, you are the great potter in the name of Jesus. He can take you from unusable to functional. Do you know how? Look at Gideon. Hallelujah. Gideon. God appeared to Gideon. And he said, Gideon, you are going to lead my people. He said, God, I am the least in my family. That means don't, nobody has use of me. I am the least in my family. And even in my family, I am the least in that family. Hallelujah. And God said to Gideon, you don't know that I am the great potter. Hallelujah. You think that no one has need of you. Maybe you think that world does not have any need for you. But God has a need for you. And God can use you. So say, Gideon, now get up. You are going to lead my people. Hallelujah. Let me tell you about Jabez. Jabez, a man filled with all kinds of pain. All kinds of trouble. Because his mother put a name on him. And because the mother born him in pain. So he put pain in Jabez's life. And Jabez was going through all kinds of pain. And every time he go to a job, he will lose that job. Every marriage, he will lose that marriage. Every time money come in, he will lose that money. But one day, Jabez said, and he prayed to God. Hallelujah. Jabez prayed to God. He said, oh, that you will bless me indeed. Hallelujah. He knew. He went all around, but nobody could help him. He said, let me go to the great potter. Let me go to Abba Father, because he can make use of me. Hallelujah. Abba Father, the great potter. Oh, that you will bless me indeed. That you will change my life. That you will turn me around. That the pain in my life, you will take it away. I pray in your life today. I pray on your mind today. Any pain you are dealing with may the great potter may he take it away may he remote you may he make you again in the name of Jesus tell oh that you will bless me indeed and you will enlarge my territory that your hand will be upon me Jabez of God I need your hand to be over me 
because there's so many pain that has come into my life and it's causing me to crack. It's causing me to break. But you are the great potter. When you put your hands on me, everything will disappear. When you put your hand on me, every pain will go. When you put your hand on me, every sickness will go. When you put your hand on me, anything broken will be made whole. I pray over your life that God will put his hand over you, over your marriage, over your children. In the name of Jesus. My God, because He's the great potter, He can turn you from unusable to functional, unusable to now people. David says, Strangers are now even bowing down to me, strangers are even now worshiping me. That's what God can do because He's the great potter to submit your life to Him. Hallelujah! God can take you from brokenness to a vessel, He can make you a vessel. He can make you a vessel, a brokenness. Hannah was broken in her life. She was broken. She could not give birth. She was broken. And every day she was crying. Every day she was crying. Every day she was crying. And every day the enemy was laughing at her. Maybe the enemy is laughing at your brokenness. Maybe the enemy is laughing at you because you, they think that there's no use of you. Hallelujah. But one thing I love about the word of the Lord is the people that know their God, they always turn around to the enemy. Say, do not rejoice over me, my enemy. Hallelujah. Do not rejoice over my life. When things are not going well, do not rejoice over me. When things are broken, do not laugh about me. Because one thing about me is that I have the great Potter, who is looking after me? So even if I fall, I will rise up again. Even when I am broken, I will be made whole again. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. For when I fall, I shall rise up again. Because Abba Father, the great Potter over my life, He will reshape me. Hallelujah! The so Bible says, Hannah was broken, and she went to her father in prayer. Oh God, that you remember me. Remember my pain. Remember my tears. Eli was like, what is this woman doing? You are drunk. You are drunk. You don't know. Hallelujah. They don't know the brokenness in your life. They don't know. When you don't know my pain, hallelujah. If you don't understand my tears, if you understood my pain, you would know my tears. Hallelujah. If you know what I've been through, then you will know why I'm crying to God. Hallelujah. So Hannah was praying, and Eli was saying, This woman is drunk. Hannah said, I am not drunk. Hallelujah. But I am broken. I need the potter. I need the great potter over my life. I I need a great potter to make me into a vessel. I need a great potter to make me into a useful person. I need a great potter to mold me in my life. I pray over your life. I pray in your ministry. I pray over you that God to make you into a vessel. For God to make you into a vessel. For God to make you into a vessel. A vessel of glory. A vessel of power. In the name of Jesus. For God to make into a vessel. Yes. And because he's the great potter, one night, God said, I'm going to get to work. And the womb that was closed, the potter added water and started molding it again. And started molding it again. And all of a sudden, Hannah became a vessel. A vessel of fruits. A vessel of fruits. And I pray for your life that you'll be filled with a vessel of fruit. That God will make you into a vessel of fruit. A vessel of power. A vessel of glory. A vessel of joy. In the name of Jesus. A vessel. And she made it. Hallelujah. So God can turn you from brokenness into a vessel. And God can turn you from death to life. Hallelujah. Amen. The moment you give your life to Jesus, the moment you surrender everything to him, the moment you say that, God, I cannot do it on my own. I need a great potter to mold me. He will turn you from death to life. And the moment you say, God, I am coming to you. I am running to you because you are the great potter. Mold me again. Build me again. Renew me again. And he will do it. The moment you surrender to Jesus and you walk with him and just surrender to him through life, life will bring all kinds of things into your life. Life will bring all kinds of things into you. 
Life will throw so many pains and problems and troubles. It will just keep throwing them at you, throwing them at you. And what life wants to do is to break that vessel, to break you. But if you walk with Jesus, if you walk with the Lord, if you give your life wholly to him, say, God, I may not understand it, but I trust that you are the great potter. And just walk with him. He will make you. Hallelujah. He will renew you. He will strengthen you. That's why the Bible said that whoever is in Christ, he is a new creation. With the whoever is in Christ, he becomes a new creation. The old has passed, and behold, the new has come. Hallelujah. When you walk with Jesus, any old thing, he will put it away, and he will bring new things into your life, and you will never lack in your life. When you walk with Jesus, when you follow Jesus, when you give your life to Jesus, he will make you whole again. He will make you whole again. He will renew you. Hallelujah. When you are down, the Spirit of the Lord will renew your heart. Will renew you. Said, I'll give you joy. I will give you peace that the world cannot take away. Nothing in this world can take you away from what God has planned for you. So I want to remind you that God is a great potter. He will make you into a new creation. Anything that comes in your life that breaks it away, do not worry. Just know that the potter is at work. God is the greatest artist I know. There's no greater artist than God. Whatever comes in your life to try and break it, do not be afraid. The potter is at work. And I am in his hands. And he is molding me. And he is shaping me. And he is making me into the image of Jesus. What a glorious hope. Isaiah 43, verse 18. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Hallelujah. May God do a new thing in your life. May God do a new thing in your job. May God do a new thing in your marriage. May God do a new thing over your family. May God do a new thing in this church. May God do a new thing in this ministry. In the name of Jesus. Because he is Abba Father, the great potter. Paul said, being confident of this very thing. That he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Whatever the potter has started in your life, whatever the potter is making through your life, may God bring it to completion. He will bring it to completion in the name of Jesus. Just be on your feet and let's pray.